All right, well, hey, everyone. My name is Brett Little, Program Manager here at the Green Home Institute. Um, I'm hanging out here in Rockford, Michigan, just north of Grand Rapids um, with John and Mindy Miner. Uh, we're here on a national solar tour uh, to talk about uh, the sustainability features of their home. This home was actually LEED Gold certified back in 2009, so it's always good to kind of catch up, see how things are going. Mm -hmm and uh you know talk about uh green home so john mindy just introduce yourselves briefly and tell us a little bit about your house so. sure uh well my name is mindy minor and i um obviously have lived in this house since 2009 my husband and i had it built and at the time we wanted to build a lead home and so we interviewed some different builders and got uh, builders who were interested in, in doing a lead home for the first time, so uh, that's where we are. Yeah, so the the home was built in 2009. It was a parade home and certified lead gold, mainly because one of the big features is the geothermal heat and cooling. And now, after that, after the fact, we've added solar panels, which we're going to talk about today on our tour. Yeah, so when it you know comes to LEED certification, we really look at something like the uh, five pillars of green building. So that's energy, health, materials, water, and place. And clearly your house embodies all of these items, so I kind of want to talk about that holistically. Mm -hmm. But today we're here on a solar energy tour, and you mentioned geothermal. And so you know, let's really dive into energy efficiency. People get excited about that. Of course, we can save money on our utility bills right away. We can stop carbon emissions by focusing on energy efficiency. So just tell us a little bit about some of the um, energy saving aspects and renewable energy of this house. Well mainly, first of all, the home is extremely well insulated and sealed. Uh, at the time we had the lowest blower door test that the inspector has ever seen. Uh, the foundation has insulated concrete forms which uh, provides styrofoam insulation inside and outside the concrete walls and, and are, are very good insulation. Um, we have passive solar through the windows upstairs. They let the sun shine in in the winter, but block it in the summer. Um, we have all, all the walls are spray foam insulation. And, uh, and we do have the geothermal heat and cooling and geothermal units are about 400% efficient. So we take advantage of the warmth and, and the heat sink of the earth to keep the temperature. Yeah, I, uh, one thing I noticed about you know geothermal back then, I think you probably got a pretty nice tax credit for it right, right. It and 30 percent federal tax credit yeah 30 percent and i know you know you know as of this video the inflation reduction act has <laughs> passed and we're hopefully talking about a 30 percent tax credit through 2030 for folks mm -hmm. who want to use geothermal heating and cooling which is some of the most efficient out there so right um one thing i noticed about your house is we were looking at the energy rating you had a hers index rating of 53 53 mm -hmm. And you know what? What we envision is almost every home should have an energy score, an energy label, when it goes to sell or gets built. For lead, you actually get your points by having these energy labels, right? Mm. And so what's cool is that your home, a score of 53, and this was before you added the solar, right? Right. Which typically right. gets involved in that. Yep. Um, so this is pre-solar. You know that's actually still ahead of today's energy code. If and not, it's also before we got rid of all of our natural gas uses. Right. We built the house with a gas range, and a gas fireplace. Right. And 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 then got the HERS score of 53 with that. And since then, last year we took those out to be completely gas free. Right. Yeah. So you know, even if it were to be updated, you know, you'd probably yeah. you'd have a much better score without the gas with the solar added. Yeah. So one thing I found that was interesting is that, you know, the way that the score had come out, it looked like you were at about 20,000 kilowatt hours. What was your predicted usage? But how much energy are you typically using here before solar? So About 9,500 kilowatt hours a year. Yeah. 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 And then we added solar, uh, which provides most of that, almost all of that, almost 95% of that throughout the year. And then when we bought the electric car, our Nissan Leaf, we had the option of either putting on another row of panels uh -huh. or buying our electricity from the solar gardens, and we chose to do that. Right. Yeah, so you promote this home as like a zero carbon home, so you you, you, you uh, must be getting some energy from another source, another point, or yeah. how does that work with the solar garden? So It works great. We bought uh, Consumers Energy works with you to figure out how much more you need than you have on site, mm -hmm. and then you buy that many blocks to provide that. And then each month we get a fee for using those blocks, 
but a credit also for how much they produce. Mm -hmm. And our electric bill last month was actually minus twenty four dollars. Yeah, the in solar August. Garden performed uh -huh. so well. Right. Okay. In August yeah. uh, twenty twenty. Yeah. 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 So all of our electricity comes from the sun. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's fantastic. Um, and I assume then it's keeping your energy bills low. And your house is probably, I assume, still comfortable, right? You're oh, not sure. sacrificing oh, comfort. Sure. We're Absolutely. Not, we're not huddled in the dark corner. Yeah. Cold. <laughs> no, we're, it's plenty warm, and we use the air conditioner a little bit in the summer, and it works. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so anybody who says geothermal doesn't work in Michigan should come talk to yeah, us. Come over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, now, obviously, energy efficiency, that's great, you know, um, but another part of LEED is having a healthy home. Can you talk to us a little bit about the healthy aspects of your house? <laughs> well, it's all zero step, so we can age in place. That was yeah. a, a thing that we wanted because yeah. we don't think we're ever going to move. And it was all built with zero or low emission materials, paints, flooring. There's no, hardly any car There's no carpeting in the house, so there's uh, really no fumes from anything. Mm -hmm. um, we have the air exchange system, yeah, too. We have an energy recovery ventilator, so our, even though our house is extremely well sealed and insulated, we do get fresh air intake, but the heat from that air is preserved in that exchanger. Right, yeah, so if anyone doesn't know what an energy recovery ventilator is, it's kind of like lungs, right, for a house, right? You're mm -hmm. breathing in fresh air and exhausting stale air, right? right. Breathing mm -hmm. it in and exhausting it out. So, and that's usually a more energy efficient way than like sure. what typically is done is just running a bath fan to ventilate, right? Right. And, right. And or, or leaky walls. <laughs> right, or, or relying on your old leaky walls, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so, and I really appreciate you mentioned the, the zero step aspect, because I did notice, you know, you transition into your house, it's easier to get around, yeah. everything you can yeah. access is on the first floor, mm -hmm. so yeah. that's a big aspect of health. And then that natural lighting, right? Right. You bring that in and you don't yeah. have to use artificial lighting. Right, it's a very well lit interior. Now I'm looking around the site here and I'm thinking of the place pillar. Right, yeah. um, and the first thing that I actually personally noticed is I parked right downtown uh, in Rockford so I could charge my car and then <laughs> take a nice, it's a beautiful day here, and take a nice walk here, which was pretty close, and I right. passed a park. So you're really kind of connected to everything, right? We are. Exactly. We, do, we walk downtown a lot. There's a wonderful farm market through the summer. We walk to it, we walk home, we ride our bikes to the restaurants and breweries. So that's one thing we, we like about living in town is you can commute using no energy or you know not only that you're getting exercise so yeah you right. get to a lot of places we want to yeah we're lucky to live in a great community with lots of sidewalks and trails and things like yeah. that so yeah we take advantage of that yeah the old rail trail is right there it joins our property so we use that daily yeah now another aspect of place is this site um, tell me a little bit about what this site was before you found it yeah, it was owned by an oil company for decades and used as a as a storing station for heating oil and diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. So back when this was a rail trail, a train would come down and back up a little spur track, fill these giant above ground tanks, like seven or eight of them mm -hmm. with those products, heating oil and diesel fuel, and then trucks would come up to the street and fill from those tanks. Mm -hmm. So when we bought it, the tanks were, had been gone for years, mm -hmm. but all those concrete stanchions were still there. Mm -hmm. So we had to demolish those, and this was also a, just kind of a dump site. There was a, yeah. an old trailer here, an old building, and a bunch of lumber. And it was an eyesore. When you came into town from the trail in the north, you'd see this, that's the first thing you saw in Rockford. So we were eager to buy it and clean it up and, and uh, make a better use of it. Yeah. yeah. And then I noticed just looking around, you know, it's not your standard sort of Kentucky bluegrass yard. Right. You know, some, and I appreciate where we're still here in, in time where we can see some of the aspects yeah. and the beauty of the site. So tell us a little bit about the site and what we have going on here from a nature standpoint. So. Yeah, well, we, we've we been trying and, and every year we get a little bit less uh, <laughs> grass to mow. We've mm -hmm. been trying to cut back on that. Uh, we, we purchased another lot section of the lot that had belonged to this uh, uh, house next door uh, and we decided no we're not going to plant Kentucky bluegrass on that so we we planted a no mow type of grass and that just kind of lays over and you don't have to mow it and then in the backyard which um, butts up mm -hmm. next to a creek that flows right into the Rogue River mm -hmm. we've planted almost all native plants back there right. to help with the bioremediation and keeping the water clean and that sort of thing, and cut down on mowing. So. And provide po for pollinators. There's yes. bees and birds and right. birds all over our yard. 
Yeah, so. and that's one thing a lot of people don't think about, that we're facing, a lot of animals are facing extinction, so the yeah. more we can help them out by yeah. uh, giving them food sources and nesting sources and that sort of thing, the yeah. better off we'll all be. And we chose not to have irrigation in our yard, so mm -hmm. you know, we don't have the most beautiful grass. There's some weeds here and there, and when it gets a long dry spell, it may brown up a little bit, but yeah. we like that instead of wasting the water and loading our lawn with fr chemicals. Yeah, I know we were kind of coming off here in Michigan. Uh, it's been a little more moister than it had been, right? Yeah. It had been dry, and so we got yeah. to get to see it looking pretty nice. Um, one thing I noticed that was really cool is you had attained the wildlife certification. I know that's actually a lead innovation point. You probably got it afterwards, but yeah. 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 Um, how, what was it? I mean, obviously just looking around, it's pretty obvious that you got that, but that's really your testament to helping support some of that local wildlife, right? So, exactly. Yep. yep. So I put the little sign out there hoping that I can entice others to do the same thing. Um, yeah. yeah, real, real beautiful site. So, um, you know, tell us a little bit about some of like another aspect of green is that materials pillar. So some of the sustainability, the material resource conservation yeah. that goes into the construction practice. Yeah, one of the things we chose is bamboo flooring. So our, our floors are made out of bamboo, which is a rapidly renewing resource. Um, when the builder laid out the plywood for our roof and for our flooring, they took care to use the pieces and mi minimize scrap. Mm -hmm. And they had a special dumpster out here where they loaded it with a little bit of scrap and, yeah. and monitored that for the lead points. Um, all the studs in the, in the house are these finger jointed scraps that are a mm -hmm. foot or two long. So that preserves what would otherwise be scrap wood or makes use of what would otherwise be scrap wood. And you get it, studs that are straight and not twisted so you get a better a better stud and you're saving that scrap wood. Uh, all the walls are spray foam insulation. Um, the outside of the house, probably half the outside of the house is corrugated galvanized steel, which was made out of, galvan of recycled steel and is recyclable. So whenever this house is dismantled, that can be reused. Okay. Um, one thing, you know, obviously people can't see behind the walls here is the uh, insulated concrete forms. Tell us yeah. a little bit about those. Yeah. Uh, the foundation, the lower level of the house, most of the lower level walls are made out of insulated concrete forms. That's those styrofoam blocks that fit together yeah. into which they pour concrete and have rebar running. So yeah. it it's, makes the well insulated, well sealed foundation for your house. Yeah. Yeah. Any um, you know, lessons learned? I mean, obviously you built the house quite a while ago. But, um, you know, anything that you just, well, now this, that you've been in it, right, you know, what yeah. do you think? So. Well, this is the first house we've ever built, you know, ever. Right. We didn't know how it worked, the financing and stuff. So we got an estimate for the house, got the loans, and then started building it. Yeah. And as we started building it, we'd think, oh, well, let's use steel. We wanted standing seam steel roof instead of asphalt shingles. We got a price for that. and. And, but we didn't realize we can't just go back to the bank and say we want $20,000 more. So we had to not do some things that we wanted to do. That was one of them, the, the metal roof we wanted to do. And we didn't do solar at the time. So lesson learned maybe is to think about all those things. You know, maybe if our builder and we had been more experienced in all of these lead things, we would have budgeted for more of those things. Sure, sure. But yeah, but we've been able, luckily, to be able to do some of them after the fact, like get rid of our gas, add solar, buy an electric car so we're still able to improve our yeah <laughs> you know and that and that's a good point because I, you think people get a lead home and it's like I got my lead home and I'm all done right 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 and the reality is home improvement it always goes yeah on. there's always it's new. really great to see that you've said oh we need to continue to make these improvements remove the gas line right, right. Mm -hmm. get an electric car yeah. add solar to the house so I mean our yeah. hope is that people are continuing to improve the sustainability even if they're lead platinum there's still well, I would more love right for more now. people <laughs> in Michigan to get rid of gas right. and propane and heat with like you have with an electric heat pump mm -hmm. uh, secrets out now but <laughs> <laughs> but gas yeah. has been historically so cheap that yeah. it's just becomes a cost issue for a lot of people but yeah uh, but it's the right thing to do and and yeah. it's you know provides a, an environmentally friendly comfortable living yeah. environment yeah, well, thank you so much for inviting us into your home and for the work that you, sure. you've done. Really appreciate your time, you. and uh, we'll uh, catch you next time. Yeah, so. all right. Thanks, Thanks. for coming. Thanks.